Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Peruvian turkey. That's right, this is how our friends in Peru do their Thanksgiving turkeys. Only instead of turkeys, they use chickens. And instead of calling it Thanksgiving, they call it Thursday. But none of that changes the fact that this was one of the juiciest and most flavorful turkeys I've ever made. And if you're looking for something a little less traditional this holiday, well, it doesn't really get less traditional than this. So here we go, we're gonna start by prepping our turkey. And all that means was unwrapping it, taking out that little bag of stuff inside, patting it dry. Yes, I like my turkeys like I like my martinis. And then to prep this for the marinade, we're gonna take a spatula and simply slide that between the skin and the flesh on either side of the breastbone. And as long as you're using something that's kind of flexible and doesn't have any sharp edges, this is gonna be pretty easy. That skin's pretty tough, so it shouldn't poke through. And you're gonna go down as far as you feel comfortable. And that's gonna allow us to get this incredible marinade under the skin as well as all over the surface. So once that's been prepped, we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna start the marinade, which is actually more of a wet rub. So we're gonna do this in a blender. Obviously food processor will work. And we're gonna to toss in a whole bunch of peeled garlic cloves. We're also gonna put in some dry oregano, some paprika, two different kinds. I'll tell you which one's on the blog post. And then a ton of cumin, like you're gonna to have to buy a whole bottle of cumin for this, but it's worth it. We're also gonna add some freshly ground black pepper, some soy sauce. That's right, soy sauce. Peruvian cuisine has a lot of Asian influences. And then last but not least, some oil and some vinegar. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna blend that into a thick paste. Obviously this is edited for time, but let that blend for about a minute. You want this very smooth and thick. And at that point, we're gonna go ahead and pour it over our turkey and start to spread it around with our spatula. And not only do we want the surface covered, but we're gonna take spoonfuls of that on our spatula, and we're gonna go ahead and shove that under the skin where we separated it. And then we're just gonna use the edge of the spatula to squeegee that wet rub underneath the skin all the way down as far as we can go. So we're gonna to try to apply a couple tablespoons underneath each side of the breast, and that's really gonna to help to flavor that breast meat from underneath. And once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and make sure the outside's completely covered. As you can see here, I bailed on the spatula and I went full fingers because we want complete coverage. And turkeys are famous for their nooks and crannies, so make sure you've rubbed it everywhere. I mean, everywhere. And then once you and the turkey are completely covered with that mixture, let's go ahead and clean up the bowl a little bit. And then all we're going to do is let that sit out at room temperature for one hour. Oh, and don't worry, that's safe, I'm pretty sure. And you really don't need to cover it unless you have some kind of insect issues. You can always throw a little piece of plastic over, but I kind of like that it dries out a little bit. And then one hour later, we're going to transfer this to our roasting pan. If you have one of those little racks, go ahead and use it. If not, no worries. And then a couple last things before we pop this in the oven. We're going to go ahead and tie the legs together with a little piece of butcher string. Theoretically, that's going to make it cook a little more evenly and also give it a nicer shape. So tie those legs together. And then whatever amount of that wet rub mixture you have left in the bowl, I want you to put about half of that in the cavity. And then we're going to try to reserve about a quarter cup for later. So just set that aside. I'll show you what to do with that shortly. And then last but not least, we're going to go ahead and sprinkle this with kosher salt all over. And then one pro tip for getting it on the sides without having to touch the turkey, just angle your hand while you sprinkle the salt and it will bounce onto the sides. That's right, bounce with me. And by the way, for that to count, you have to call bank. And then once that's been seasoned, we're going to go ahead and place that into a preheated 325 degree oven for approximately 15 minutes per pound, which in my case was about three and a quarter hours. And I'm gonna give you a ton more info about that on the blog post. And then one thing we can do while we're waiting, we can go ahead and take that little bit of extra wet rub, add a little splash of oil, maybe a touch of water to thin it out a little bit. You be the judge of that. And what we'll do is we'll use that as a final glaze towards the end of the cooking process. So we'll just set that aside and let's go into the oven to take a peek. And what I like to do about halfway through the estimated cooking time just shape a little piece of foil like this, roughly the same size as your breasts, the turkey's breasts, of course. And I like to put that just over the top about halfway through the cooking to keep that top from getting too dark or too dry. So I like to put that on there. And then nothing really happens until an estimated half hour before the turkey's done. And again, I'm gonna explain all these times on the blog post, but about a half hour before you think your turkey's gonna be done, we're gonna remove the foil, and we're gonna take that reserved wet rub that we thinned out a little bit, and we're gonna go ahead and brush that all over to give it a beautiful glaze. And by the way, I really don't think that's a bullet hole, but that's certainly not gonna prevent me from telling my guests that's what it is. All right, your job as chef is just not to feed your guest, it's to entertain them. Never forget that. So we're gonna brush that all over, we're gonna pop it back in for, like I say, about a half hour, or until it's done. And by done, I mean the internal temperature of the thickest part of the thigh will be about 170 to 175. And that Peruvian turkey is done and ready to rest. Look at that, that is a pretty gorgeous bird. 
And as you can see, that wet rub really forms a gorgeous crust. And not only is that crust beautiful and super flavorful, but it really locks in those juices. I just love, love, love this technique. So we're of course gonna let that rest at least 20 minutes. And then we're gonna start a slicing. And because I was so curious to see how well this worked, I made my first slice right at the end of the breast towards the cavity. This is always gonna be the driest, most overcooked part. It's the least protected, it's the leanest meat. But despite that, it was still incredibly moist and juicy. And you can't really tell too well from this shot, but watch when I cut this piece in half, you're actually gonna see juice pouring down the bird. And if this part's that juicy, imagine how the rest is gonna be. Actually, forget about imagine, make it and see. And while I would have been happy just standing here carving pieces off and eating it, I figured I better plate it up properly. So I went ahead and sliced some up. I served it with those traditional Peruvian Thanksgiving side dishes, sweet potato tots, and black beans. And whatever your favorite sauce or gravy is, it will go well on this turkey. And what did I use? An experiment, which I will now show you is a bonus video at no extra cost. While my turkey was resting, I threw some creme fraiche in a blender, along with some jalapeno pepper, some fresh cilantro, some chicken stock, and some lime juice. And we're gonna blend that smooth and we're actually gonna deglaze the roasting pan with that. So usually these ingredients are made into a cold sauce served alongside Peruvian chicken, which this recipe is based on. But I got this crazy idea to make a hot gravy out of it. And I'm so glad I did, it was wonderful. So all I did was pour off the fat, put this back on medium high heat, poured that in, brought it up to a simmer, make sure I scraped off all that amazing fond off the bottom of the pan, which as you know are all those caramelized meat juices and deliciousness. And I knew I was gonna lose that bright green color, but I didn't care. I was going for a hot gravy, not a cold condiment. So all I did was bring it up to a boil and reduced it until it was thick enough to spoon over. And of course, as with anything we make, we're gonna taste for seasoning. I added some salt and some pepper and a little shake of cayenne. And at that point, my experiment was done. So our turkey's rested, our gravy has reduced, and it's time to eat. I'm gonna go ahead and spoon that over the turkey. And then we're gonna dig in for the official taste. And yes, that's a different plate of turkey. That plate you just saw was for a saucin, and this plate here is for a eaten. It just looked better. And man, I said it at the beginning, this was one of the most delicious, most flavorful and juiciest turkey recipes I've ever tried. So like I said, if you're looking for something deliciously different this Thanksgiving holiday, I hope you consider giving this Peruvian turkey a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.